Hello everybody, it's Herbert here again with another video for you and in this video a request from one of the subscribers I'm gonna put his name up here. He asked if I could do a little bit more bash and I will be glad to do some bash because it's been a while since I did some bash Well, actually it hasn't been a while But I've noticed at my new job that I have to use bash more often than I thought I had to and I noticed that I might need a little bit of a refresher so I went back into my bash uh, scripting knowledge and uh, I actually got my uh, Linux Bible book over here, which I used here. So we're going to start off, of course, working with bash scripts. So again, if you don't have uh, your, if you don't have your visual studio code installed yet, you can actually also use VI for this. So we can actually just use Vim. Uh, but you know, we are not really required to use Vim because we are working on a machine that has a graphical user interface so anytime I don't have to use Vim I'm quite pretty happy because I'm not really the best at using Vim uh, I should use it a little bit more uh, I try to use Vim as much as possible um, you know sometimes you know I don't have any choice because sometimes you know at work I do have to use Vim because we log on to servers and we have to use Vim but for this specific purpose we don't have to use vim of course we can actually use a nice graphical user interface uh, text editor like visual studio code and if you don't have visual studio code you can just look that up on google visual studio code you can download it and we can start writing our bash script over here so let's start off with our bash script and we're going to do the shebang shebang bin bash is how we start shell scripts of course always if you're using bash of course so first of all what we're, what we're going to do over here is we want to create a simple backup script so let me quickly explain to you what we are actually going to do so we're going to create a script that creates a backup of a source directory and copies that over to a destination directory destination directory we'll need to make sure also that it checks whether or not a file already exists so it's actually something that will uh, back up incrementally so if the file already exists in the destination location it will not copy it if it doesn't exist it will create it and it will always check whenever there, there's files added and it will check if those files on the source directory exist in the destination directory and if they don't we'll create them and if they do exist already we'll skip them and if they do exist it will also check if the file in the source directory is newer than the one in the destination directory and yeah that's it and it will create it will overwrite that file as well so um amazingly all of that only takes about i have about 18 lines well actually it's only 16 lines of code so what we're going to do is first of all we're working in our documents folder over here so let's actually let's actually quickly create two folders over here so we're going to create a uh, let's or first go over to our documents folder over here. There's nothing in here. That's just our backup. That's sh. We all, of course, we need to do schmod plus x backup dot sh because if we don't do that, we can't execute that later on. So keep in mind if you're creating this file right now in your Visual Studio Code, if you're creating that file over here, make sure you open up your console and make sure you schmod plus x and then you enter the name of the file you just created. So keep that in mind, you need to make your files executable or else they will not execute. Now, what we wanna do is we're working in our documents folder over here. So um, yeah, let's make the directories here. So let's make a directory and we'll call this one source. And let's uh, create another one. I will call this destination. So we can actually close this up over here. Let's open up our text editor again. So now we have, so now we have destination and source in our uh, documents folder. And actually, let's create variables, right? So let's do source equals home Herbert. So always remember, of course, these are going to be different for you. Documents and source. So that's the source folder that we just created. And then the destination can be slash home slash Herbert slash documents slash destination. Destination. There we go. 
Right. So we have source, we have destination. Let's now start with our for loop. So we're going to for loop all of the files. So we want to make sure that it checks all of the files, right? So we're going to do for file in. And now we're going to define a variable. And the variable is actually going to be a command that we are executing in the shell. So we actually do, we open up our dollar sign and then we do find, and then we're going to uh, tell it to look in the source, find everything that's in the source. And we're going to print that out. So print F print format is going to be open your open the brackets percent P backslash N. And then let's uh, close that up and we want to do so that's the problem with autocorrect sometimes it doesn't do what you want to do uh, now we're going to go over the if statement so for every file we want to check a few things first so if open up the brackets uh, if the file so minus a is actually uh, checking whether the file exists or not. So we want to check if uh, destination file exists. So this is actually going to check whether or not. So when we look in the destination and we see if the file exists, we are looping. Let me quickly explain what we're doing here. So we're looping through all of the files in the source. And we're listing everything in a recursive manner. So what that means is all the files that are underneath source are going to be listed in a uh, relational path. So in a relative path. So that means that everything starting from source will be listed here. And we're just going to append everything behind source. We're just going to append that after destination. So what that is going to do is it's going to check if anything that is behind source also exists after destination. So that's why we're checking if destination slash file exists. So it's actually checking whether or not the files that are inside source, whether or not those files already exist behind destination. So that's what we're checking here. So that's very important, of course, because now we can actually check whether or not the file that we are trying to copy has already been created. And if it has already been created, we don't need to copy that again, right? So we can actually implement that in our script. So then we want to do another thing. So if the, um, if the source file is newer than, so NT newer than, if the source is newer than the destination forward slash file uh, then we also want to do something else so let's actually leave a message right so let's do echo uh, newer file detected copy there we go and then we want to also do that right we want to copy recursively because that means that if we're copying recursively that means that we're also copying all of the underlying uh folders and all of the files underneath those folders so we need to make sure that it's recursively copied so we want to do source forward slash file and then we'll copy that to destination file and else if that's not the case let's echo out uh, file file exists skipping so it already if it already exists we're just skipping and then we're just ending it with fi and we need to do an else statement over here again so else echo file is being copied over to destination oops destination cp minus r source file dest 
file. And we're going to close it up. And we're going to do done here. So let me quickly go over what I just typed over here because I went over it a little bit fast. So what we did over here was, we're, first of all, we're going to check if the file exists. And if it does exist, uh, if it if the file exists in the destination file, it's going to check whether or not the file in the in the source directory is newer than the, the file in the destination directory. Then it's going to uh, also tell it that it detected a new file and it's going to copy that new file. And else, if that is not true, else it's going to say that the file already exists skipping. So if this here, so this is all, um, so over here, we're actually checking whether or not this is true or not. So we need to make sure that the file in the destination exists. But if the file doesn't exist, it's very simple. We're just going to copy the file, right? So if the file doesn't exist, means that it hasn't been created. It means that we don't have to check whether or not within the source file, that file is newer because it's it never has been created in the destination, uh, in the destination folder. So we can actually go ahead and uh, copy that over from the source to the destination directory. So what we're going to do is else if this does not exist, we're just going to say this is being copied over to destination drive uh, to destination folder. And we're going to copy everything from the source over to the destination, close up our if statement here. So this should actually be okay. So we save this now. And maybe we made a little bit of uh, typos here and there, but we're going to find that out just in a minute over here. We're working in our documents uh, folder over here. Let's open up the uh, console again, because I think it's easier for you guys to read when I actually use the bigger font over here. So let's go into documents uh, and let's list what is in there. So we have the destination uh, folder and we have the source folder. So let's actually create a few things in the source folder, right? So let's go into the source folder and let's touch, let's touch a few things. Let's touch file one, file two, file, file three. So there we go. And then we can make directory test there, test there one, test there two and test there three. Uh, Let's list what's in here. So we can have all of these things over here. We can actually create. Um, so we can go in here and we can touch file two. Oops, touch file two, touch file one, touch file three. And we'll find those in there as well. So let's go back now. Let's go back into our documents directory and let's run backup.sh and let's hope that actually works. So we can actually already see that file two is being copied over to over here. There we go. And we can also see that the test tiers are being copied and the files underneath test tiers are already being copied. Now let's run that again. And it should say that the files already exist, you see? So that's actually what it's doing right now. So every time we are going to copy over files, uh, it's going to check whether or not that file already exists. Now watch what happens when I would do something like this. So let's go into the destination drive over here, uh, destination folder over here. And let's remove file one. And let's go back now and let's run our script again. So let's run our script again and we'll see that File one, the one we copied, uh, the one we just deleted is being copied again. So it really checks whether or not those things exist. And if they don't exist, it will create them again. Now look, watch what happens when I do something like VI file one. Uh, let's actually first go into our source directory here and let's do VI file one, for example, and let's uh, press the I key here and we'll do test, 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 escape and we'll right quit and we will go back and we'll run our command again and looks like newer file detected copying so file one has been edited so it found out that there's a new file detected and it's copying that file the rest of the files it's just skipping all of that so when we go into cd destination and let's do vi test file one. Oh, I think I may have, 
uh, I think I may have made a little typo here. File one, it's just file one. So file one, VI file one. There we go. So we know now that the file we created in the source directory has already been uh, copied over. And this test file over here needs to be removed. So actually that's it guys. It's, I know uh, it's, it's sound, it looks very simple. I hope that, you know, it's a fun little project for you guys to try out. Uh, one more thing I want to do, maybe one more thing uh, I want to do is maybe you want to do a, um, maybe you want to plan this in your cron tab. So I do have a video on how to plan something with your cron tab. I'm going to link it on the top right corner of this video over here. I'm not going to go over how to do this uh, in this video because I already have a video about it. So you can go over to that video, watch that, and maybe you can combine the two. And this way there's, you know, these are just fun ways of you getting to know Linux. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. Did you like it? Didn't you like it? Leave a comment down below and leave a like if you want to see more. And don't forget to subscribe because there's definitely more videos like this coming up in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.